Nick and Alyssa are racing up a wall. Alyssa's height on the wall is given by the equation a is equal to one third t plus five. So it looks like it sounds like they're wall climbers of some kind. Where a is Alyssa's height and feet after climbing for t seconds. Nick started racing at the same time as Alyssa and is also climbing at a constant speed. His height is shown in the following table. So this is t in seconds, time in seconds. This is height and feet. Who started out higher, Alyssa or Nick? So to figure out their starting position, we just need to figure out what was their height at time equals zero. That's when this whole race started. For Alyssa, it's pretty straightforward. When time is equal to zero, you have one third times zero plus five. Well, that's just going to be five feet. So Alyssa's starting position is at five feet when time is equal to zero. Now let's think about Nick's height at time equals zero. And there's a couple of ways that we can go about doing this. One is, is just to back up to, to kind of go backwards on this chart. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if this is time and this is, let's say, n for Nick's height because we have a for Alyssa's height. So let me make a little table here. We already know that at time six seconds or after six seconds, he's six feet in the air or along the wall. At time eight, he is seven feet in the air or along the wall. And at time 10, he has gotten to a height of eight feet. So what's happening here? Every time, every time two seconds goes by, every time two seconds goes by, he increases in one foot. He increases one foot. You have another two seconds, he increases in height by one foot. So you could go backwards. If we take away two seconds to four seconds, he will decrease in height by one foot. If we go back another two seconds, he will decrease in height by another one foot. The reason why we can say this is because we know he's climbing at a constant speed. So if we decrease by another two seconds to our starting time, then we know that his, he would have been one foot lower. So he would have been at three feet. So just like that, we now know at time equals zero, Nick's height is three feet in the air. So Alyssa started out higher than Nick. So this right over here would be the correct answer. Now the other way to do it is set up an equation just like we had for Alyssa and substitute for time equals zero. And the way to do that is to recognize that Nick's height as a function of time is also going to be a linear equation because they're both climbing, they're both climbing at constant speeds, or we know that Nick is climbing at a constant speed. So Nick's height as a function of time is going to look like, Nick's height is going to be some slope, some rate of change, essentially his height per, his height per second at times time plus his initial, plus his initial position. So how can we solve for m, the slope, and his initial position? Well, the slope is just his rate of change of height. So it's literally how much does his height change per unit time? So m, right over here, m is just going to be for a unit time, for a change in time, how much is his height changing? And his height is, we use the letter n. So we already know that when time increases by two, when time increases by two, his height increases by his height increases by one foot by one foot. So we know that m is equal to one half. He increases one half feet per second, and you see that there because it takes him two seconds to go one foot. So we can fill in m here. So we know now that n n is equal to one half one half t plus b. Now, to solve for b, you could just substitute one of these points. All of these points must satisfy this equation right over here. So we could use the point six. So if we put a six in here, so when time is six, we know that n is six. So you have six is equal to one half times six plus b. Or you get six is equal to three plus b. Subtract three from both sides, you get b is equal to three. So there you have it, you get Nick's equation as a or Nick's height as a function of time. Nick as a function of time is going to be equal to one half t plus three. So now we have an equation just like Alyssa's. And we can say, well, when time is equal to zero, he's at a height of three, which is lower than Alyssa's initial height.